what's up you guys this is rock from the gay guy please and today on the snapshot we've got a bit of a rougher cut when we take a look at Korra now I was thinking to myself exactly how I wanted to handle this after I did a bit of research mainly because of the fact that there are some things here that I'm like is it supposed to be that way or is it not supposed to be that way and a part of me really didn't want to invest in an episode where I was doing a bunch of cuts and like polishing it up just to have everything changed on like Monday because as you guys know there has been no patches out for Korra uh, quite yet because she did release on a Friday so a part of me is like polish this up or get them the information out ASAP so I figured I would go ahead and do that for you guys um, now for those of you wondering how to pick up Korra she is actually available in the sanctuary onslaught now as you can see there are two different modes the elite mode and the sanctuary onslaught basic mode now if you guys are just looking specifically for Korra stuff go into the sanctuary onslaught mainly because of the fact that they they actually have a higher drop rates here. Um, I believe in Elite Sanctuary Onslaught there's some parts that drop down to like 3% um, while in Sanctuary Onslaught the lowest percentage you get is like a 5% uh, percent up in Rotation C. I'll actually go ahead and leave the drop tables down in the description box below. It's in one of the hotfix notes. All you gotta do is expand them um, and that should kind of give you an idea of exactly what you're working with so you can decide, you know, where you want to be when it comes to grabbing Korra. Um, now let's go ahead and take a look at her stats. I think the big shining stat right here, if you could take a look at it, is the fact that she's actually got a good chunk of armor. And this was something that I was actually surprised of. I was like, oh man, she can actually take a couple hits. Um, which I wasn't necessarily expecting just looking at her, but she is a metal frame. Now, as compared to Oberon Prime, she's actually got more armor than he does. So that should give you a little bit of an idea as to how exactly we're going to end up building her. She's also got a nice sprint speed, decent energy pool, nothing too crazy in health pool. Her shields themselves are not necessarily all that fantastic, um, but... The girl can take a hit, which I'm big on. If we're going to take a look at her passive right now, this is one of those things um, that I kind of wanted to point out as I'm not sure if this is broken or if this is quite right. But as you can see, her passive is Beast Shield and she gets increased armor for each pet in range. Right now, it seems to be 15 per pet but it only seems to apply to her pets. So the max that you can get out of this is 30%, which, you know, isn't necessarily bad. 30% armor boost on a frame that's actually got a good chunk of armor um, is actually really handy dandy. Now, there are some questions that some people have had when it comes to Venari, uh, so we'll go ahead and tackle those real quick. Uh, as you can see, Venari is its kind of like own entity. It's got an extra slot. You can, of course, equip um, any other companion you want, including Kavats and Kubros. Um, and the cool thing about Venari is you actually don't have to worry about overlapping mods. So if your Kavat has a bite on it or has a maul on it, it's totally fine. They'll still both be able to use that mod. So, you know, share and share alike. Um, and it won't kind of unequip them like it happens with Sentinel weapon mods as opposed to your own weapon mods. So don't worry, the mods can overlap and you will be fine. Now let's go ahead and jump into her skills and abilities. Those are the same thing, so it's early recording. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so Whip Claw is Korra's first ability, and this is basically just a crack of her whip. As you can see, it has a range and radius stat. The range dictates how far away you can strike an enemy at, and the radius is the area of effect that takes place when you strike that enemy. So I can hit an enemy up to 16 meters away, and within that 5 meter area of effect, other enemies will also take damage. Keep in mind that the radius is unaffected by range mods. Um, as for the damage, it is affected by damage mods, but it also adopts damage mods from your melee weapon. So base damage, elemental, physical, those are all going to go in. Status mods and critical chance mods also affect this weapon. However, as much as I wanted it to be a thing, condition overload and blood rush do not affect this weapon. Um, now, I do want to kind of put out one more thing. This is also affected by your melee combo counter. So that is definitely something that you can use to amp up this ability's damage. So straight out of the gate, as you can see right here with this current setup, I'm doing about, I want to say it's 2k, yeah, at about 2k damage um, to him just with the normal Whip Claw. But as I've got a 1.5 multiplier on him, I've got 
3,000 damage coming on in each time. Let's see if I can maybe get to two without killing him. Nope, I can't. But uh, I think that pretty much expresses everything that we need to express with Whip Claw. It's a very, very basic ability. Um, it's actually really, really nice to combo in with some of the other skills, but we'll jump into those in a little bit. Moving along, Korra's second ability is Ensnare, and this is definitely one of my favorites in her kit. Basically what happens is you disable an enemy by slapping some living metal on them and surrounding enemies are slowly dragged to that enemy and become disabled as well. As you can see, its range stat dictates how far away you can cast this ability from. Its radius is the range in which it'll start snatching enemies and the propagation delay is actually the delay in which it will start snatching enemies. So you cast it, then at 0.48 seconds, it'll go ahead and grab another enemy and then another 0.48 seconds, it'll start dragging in another enemy and 0.48 seconds it'll go ahead and do that as well now if you want to release the enemies from that and put in a little damage to boot you can hit them with whip claw whip claw will actually deal twice the amount of damage to enemies that are ensnared however this will free them from the ensnare um, but in addition to that, there are some other weird things that I want you guys to go ahead and take a look at now we're gonna start off with the basic ability first grab a couple friends here real fast and show you how that all kind of like sizes up. So as you can see, casting the ability and it is slowly dragging enemies um, towards the ensnared target. Now we can break them free by the use of Whip Claw and they're all ready to be on the loose. But as you can see here, they're all being dragged in again thanks to that ensnare. So that's the basics of this ability. Um, one of the things that I found that I thought was really, really interesting was the fact that enemies tend to stay unalerted, or not unalerted, but they tend to stay um, disarmed unless you hit them with an impact prop. It's really weird, and I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to show you here, but the second you get them with an impact proc, all of a sudden they start becoming aware. Like I said, Korra is in like early days and a part of me is like, is that meant to be a thing? So let's go ahead and actually let's grab uh, something a little bit hardier. A little, a little Billy should help us out real quick. So let's jump in and hopefully we can get an impact proc going so you can see exactly how this works. So as you can see here, I can shoot him just fine until that impact proc and now he's like, fuck you bitch, I don't like you at all. Um, so that is one of the strange things that happens with Whip Claw. I've actually tried this um, with Blast as well and Blast, um, number one, doesn't affect them and it does not break them out of this. So this is the only status proc that for some reason will do it. So I've got Slash, I've got Viral, he's just chilling. But as soon as that impact comes through, he is a not, he is not a happy man in the least bit. So that is definitely something to note um, when you're using Whip Claw. If you're wondering why some enemies are becoming alerted and why others are just, you know, sitting there happy dandy, it is most likely because you had an impact proc go off and uh, break, wake them up from their ensnarement because they're still going to be immobilized. They're not going to be able to go anywhere, but uh, they will definitely shoot at you if they can. Alrighty, so Korra's third ability is her iconic Venari. She can summon a Kavat that can take on attack, defense, and healing stances. And as you can see right here too, she does have a speed modifier attached to her. Um, this is improved by power strength. So if you want Venari to move a little bit faster, you can actually go ahead and toss on a little bit of power strength. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually show you the mod setup that I have for them. Now, I do have a couple strange things on here and we'll talk about those in a second. Um, I am currently using Link Health and Link Armor because of the fact that those are the two stats that I am using for Korra's survivability. Um, however, if you did want to put Link Shields on there, it will transfer some of the shields over. Innately though, Venari has no shield, so it's not something that you really need to worry about. Um, one of the things that you'll see here that you're gonna be like, Rob, what is that? Are you crazy? But um, I have to explain myself. As you can see here, I am using Metapet Kit here for health regen. Now, of course, there is no use with bleed out reduction because when Venari dies, Venari disappears and you just end up recasting them. Now, the big reason I am using this right now is because um, one of the mods that I tend to use on a lot of my Kavats and Kubros is, is not Loyal Companion, but it is Pack Leader. Sorry about that. Um, but basically, what 
this does is it allows you to heal your Kavats or Kubros with your melee attacks. However, for some reason that does not work for Venari, nor does picking up health orbs. It's a strange thing, and I don't, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't necessarily need Metapet Kit because of the fact that Venari is really chunky and very, very strong. Um, and I've taken them into like one hour plus Kuva survivals and they've been fine and dandy. But you know, it's just nice to like have um, the regen on there. It just makes me feel like I'm taking care of my pet. <laughs> You'll also notice one thing is I'm missing one slot. Now there's two reasons for this. Number one, I couldn't fit it in because I have not finished um, forming Venari. And yes, you do have to form a Venari separately than you do Korra. So keep that in mind. That is definitely um, a little bit of an investment there, but I feel like it's very much worth it. And Pounce is probably the mod that I would be slotting in there. However, there's an animation for, for other Kavat users, you'll know this animation very well, that um, Venari uses, and I want to make sure that that's kind of like highlighted and you're like, oh no, that's Pounce. I want to make sure that you guys are clear that that's not Pounce. However, in that last spot, I will either be using Pounce, um, Hunter's Synergy to improve the crit, or Hunter's Command. I haven't quite decided yet, but right now I'm just going to say put in a Pounce and leave it at that. Another thing that I do want to point out is that um, Venari, for some reason, the base damage is impact. I would have thought it would have been slash. I don't know. That didn't really make much sense to me, but that is what that is. So let's go ahead and show off exactly how Venari performs. Let's grab some uh, energy. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do a couple things. So we're going to uh, get a little Billy the Bombard out here. Come on, hit me once with a rocket. Just once. Just once. Just once is all I need. There you go. Perfect. That was twice, you bitch. All right, so let's go ahead and summon our Venari. So as you can see, they start off with attack posture, and they do that kind of like pouncy, like chainy, whippy thing. So as you can see, that's what their that's what their attack posture allows them to do, and it's this quick zippy attack um, that also stuns the targets. That's what I didn't want anybody to be confused over with Pounce. Now as you can see, this bastard wanted to hit me with a rocket, which I'm not very fond of, so you can actually cycle into a defensive posture by hitting the um, summon command again. As you can see right there, um, let's go ahead and give him a whip. As you can see right there, he actually knocked them down and disabled them. So he goes down and then all of a sudden, no more weapon in hand and that is a permanent disarm. And last but not least, um, we're gonna go ahead and cycle into the healing aura. And basically what happens is Venari will seek out the lowest um, the lowest health unit in your group and they will provide a healing aura that kind of comes along with them. So right now it's a set 50%. I have not seen it go any higher with, um, with power strength mods. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. And come on, let's just give it up for the Kavat armor stripping. That is absolutely... Fantastic. So all you have to do is just really pay attention to what your group needs. Most of the time, if I'm feeling selfish and if we're not taking on um, like really, really difficult units, like heavily armored units, I'll usually be in attack mode. And the reason I go in attack mode is because we have that attack health link. So when Venari is attacking enemies, um, just innately, they're going to end up restoring your health. However, when shit gets a little bit tough, um, and we're going up against targets that you can't kill quite so quickly. It is nice to have that 50%, um, not 50%, but 50 point health regen per second. It's definitely been a nice bonus, especially because Korra can be very, very tanky. So if you toss in some like arcane graces and then also toss on Venari's, um, health regen over time, you can create a very, very survivable version of Korra, which I'm definitely fond of. I don't use the defensive one too much. However, it's nice to kind of swap into for fun and games. And finally, we arrive at Korra's Strangle Dome! And I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I am so happy that they actually stuck with this name. I heard that there were some rumors internally that they were planning on changing this out, but you know what? I think they saw how much the community latched onto this one, so they went ahead and let us have it. Now, if I'm gonna be frank with you, this is not the first take of this. In fact, there were many bad takes of this, and that's mainly because of the fact that Strangle Dome is just a weird one to explain. Um, but at its core, Korra creates this dome of chain. And when I say dome, I mean specifically dome, because if you actually jump and cast this in the air, rip trinity, um, it actually creates just like the half circle thing. There's, there's nothing beneath it. It's not a globe. It's very much just a dome. But at any of the chain link 
areas, the places where the chains intersect, the vertices. I don't, listen, I'm not a chain expert. I don't know what they're called, but wherever those chains connect, um, they will actually try to snatch enemies and drag them into the dome. So as you can see here, and this is one of the places that I think is a little bit often bugged, um, there is the radius and grab radius. Those two are actually flip-flopped. Uh, the radius of the current build that I have is 16 meters and the grab radius is eight meters. So we have the 16 meters, then eight meters out from that, it will start grabbing enemies and dragging them in. Um, however, there are a couple other very, very interesting things to note that DE has not actually put in here. Now, as you can see, I've swapped out our normal Ancient Healer, which is the one that I select because it's easy, with a Corrupted Ancient. And that's because I don't necessarily want uh, certain enemies to attack this one innately. So let's go ahead and simulate it real fast, though. And then let's go ahead and jump on in uh, and get some numbers on this. So as you can see, when I shoot him in as a body shot, it's 2606, right? Let's go ahead and get another one so you guys can see that a little bit more clearly, 2606. However, when we toss down the Strangle Dome, um, as you can see now body shots are 5, 2, 1, 3. And as you can see, I'm kind of like scooching around um, and like making sure that it's like not a headshot, you know? So you see the 5, 2, 1, 3 definitely going on instead of the normal 2606. And that is because enemies in the Strangle Dome actually end up taking double damage. Just note, they do have to be snatched by the dome in order to suffer this damage. Now, the one thing that I want to point out here is that unlike in Snare, because I actually went ahead and kind of played around with this, um, the Whip Claw that you see, um, I, I'm always terrible at hitting this. The Whip Claw that you see is doing double damage as well. So that was 4K that it was doing there. And as you can see, it's only doing 2037 um, here. So again, 2037. And then into the Strangle Dome we go. And when you see that, it's actually doing, oh my god, I'm really, really bad at hitting it sometimes. 4074. So they are taking double damage from Whip Claw there. But I think it's more specifically because of the fact that um, the dome just grants you bonus double damage no matter what. So what I'm going to end up doing real quickly here is I'm actually going to uh put on my invincibility because i will need it i don't know why for some reason i had damage on but one of the interesting things that you'll see is you can actually cast two uh two strangle domes at a time strangle dome will always center itself around you so you can go ahead and toss one down there and it'll make the first one disappear so i have the one up top and then i will have the one here and what i'm going to do real quick is i'm going to take that corrupted ancient and i'm going to lead him on a little party so hello, Mr. Mr. Corrupted Ancient. Come on down. Come on down and join me. Join me at the Strangle Domes. Um, so as you can see, he gets snatched. And now for the real trick. What we're going to do is we're going to summon a couple Corrupted Bombards. And this is why I had to specifically do a Corrupted Ancient because uh, Corrupted Bombards won't attack the Corrupted Ancients. So we're going to get those Bombards to come on over. And this is also why I had to be invulnerable for this. Um, but... The really interesting thing that the Strangle Dome does is it will actually cause enemies... You stay there. You stay there, sir. We did not ask for you. Um, the thing that the Strangle Dome will actually do is it will cause enemies to attack their own allies within the dome. It actually becomes... So as we can see, let's take a look at his health right here. Um, as more of those rockets hit, they actually become viable targets for their allies to attack and will actually, um, it, at least from what it seems, these things do seem to actually taunt um, those bombards to attack it instead of me. Because as you noticed, I haven't gotten hit once. They've really wanted to kill this corrupted angel real bad, right? So that is definitely one of the things that makes this a lot more unique. Because I know a lot of people were talking about the fact that this is just basically uh, Vauban's Bastille, but not as good. So see, now, now they know that I'm here. But let's see if we can actually uh, get one Strangle Dome down to snatch one of these guys. So come on, come this way. And maybe not the other ones, because that's the only thing is they, they move in a certain pattern. So unless I can get one specifically to get snatched. There you go. Um, let's see if they actually try to start attacking him. Yup. All their rockets start going here, so it actually is a really, really cool way of keeping you and your group safe because you have all of these additional targets that are being attacked by the Strangle Dome. Very different, very unique, very weird. <laughs> 
But then again, I mean, when you're into these kind of kicks, kinks is what I was going to say. Maybe kicking is a kink. Maybe that's a thing. I mean, who could really blame them? <laughs> All right. And one last thing that I did want to go ahead and point out about Strangle Dome. As you can see here, I actually added a little power strength to the dome itself. And I wanted to show off the fact that it does not actually increase the damage multiplier. So again, we're going to go ahead and bring out that ancient healer. Take a couple shots at him. 2606. And then let's lay down that strangle dome real fast. I don't know why I'm aiming at the ground. I don't have to aim at the ground. But again, you will see 5213. So extra power strength isn't necessarily needed. And that was just a headshot crit. So you can ignore that. But extra power strength is not needed to fuel the damage amplification of the strangle dome. Now, as for the build, this is actually just my current working build. This is the one that I've been playtesting and I've been really, really, really fond of. Um, I've played with more power strength, I've played with more range, and to be honest with you, I actually ran into somebody who was using overextended in a mission, and overextended made it really irritating to kill enemies. So I'm more than happy with the stretch and cutting drift. I'm just sticking to that. Again, power strength is not something that I felt was necessary in any way, shape, or form. However, I do want to show you another variant um, that I've also been experimenting with. So this one is my current go-to. However, I've been trying this one out as well. I've actually been going for a little bit of, I believe it's called Hunter's Adrenaline, and then we swap Arcane Energize out with Arcane Graces. So as you can see here, basically what we're doing is creating like a Korra um, energy tank. So basically, as Korra gets hit more, they get more energy, and it's a little bit more survivable because you have the grace. Um, you do have Korra's uh, healing stance for her kitty, so I don't necessarily feel like it's 100% necessary, and that's why I was kind of like going with the other variants earlier, where we were just using um, Augur, I believe it was Augur Message for more duration, and then we swapped that back into Arcane Energize so that we would always stay fueled. Um, but I've been bouncing between the two to see which one I actually end up preferring. Um, and right now, this is the one that's winning it for me. I might actually swap an Arcane Energize for an Arcane Grace, so like have a little bit of a hybrid going on. Um, but this is the way I'm currently running it, and I am super happy. And that about brings this episode to an end. All in all, I'm having a ton of fun with Korra. I've been using her a lot in Kuva Survivals, and I've been placing down her Strangle Domes in spawn kind of like pathing. So that way, whenever an enemy is trying to rush one of our Kuva Harvesters, they actually get caught in the domes. In addition to that, Ensnare is absolutely fantastic. You don't always have to like break up Ensnare with your whip because I think that's the initial want and need, but sometimes I'll toss down an Ensnare in an area, wait for enemies to path by that, and then it'll just kind of yank them all in, and then as soon as we've got like a big juicy ball, that's when we go ahead and crack the whip on them. And it, there's no nothing that feels better than that, just like getting a big old clump. But you can leave Ensnare down. Um, I think with the first build that I showed off, it's actually got a good duration, so it can act as some pretty major CC. Also think about that with a little bit of pox action, maybe a little bit of torrid action, you know, a lot of good things happening there. Um, so there's definitely a lot to enjoy with Korra. Venari is absolutely fantastic and it's nice to have two beasts at once. Um, however, I am kind of questioning, I'm like, her passive says for every pet, right? For every pet. I'm only getting 15 from Venari and 15 from my cat, like, and I've been leveling with a bunch of other Koras, so I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, maybe I can get some benefits off of those pets too? I don't know. Uh, regardless, those are just my thoughts on Korra right now. Of course, um, there probably will be some upcoming patches in the future that may change and skew things a little bit more. Um, but that about does it for me. So as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch your body. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye